various systems and infrastructures are employed in rendering vehicle tracking and fleet management services. Among these are space infrastructure, which is made up of the satellite navigation systems, also known as the SatNav systems, such as the Global Positioning System GPS, GLONASS, Vedal, Galileo, among others. Receivers and sensors, that is the tracking units and the aftermarket sensors, which may be installed in vehicles to achieve specific outcomes desired by the user. Communication infrastructures, which provide the channel through which the tracking device, tracking server and the client communicate. The tracking servers. These include both the physical server machine or data centers and the backend tracking software that is hosted on the server. Geocoding or mapping systems and the client. Next, I will discuss further on each of these systems and infrastructures employed in tracking of objects, starting with space infrastructure, which is the underlying technology that makes precise positioning of objects possible. The space infrastructure is made up of satellite-based radio navigation systems, sometimes called the SatNav systems, such as the famous Global Positioning System, GPS, owned by the US government and its various alternatives, which include GLONASS, owned by the Russian government, Beidou, owned by the Chinese government, Galileo, owned by the European Union, Quasi-Zenit Satellite Systems, QZSS, a regional satnav system owned by the Japanese government, and Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, IRNSS, another regional satnav system owned by the Indian government. GPS, like the other satnav systems, are a constellation of satellites arranged at various orbits in outer space, such that no matter where you are on Earth, signals from at least four of these satellites are available to you, so long there are no obstructions shielding you from the open sky. Because we cannot see these signals, we need receivers to pick up and analyze these weak satnav signals and provide us with location data usually in the form of longitude, latitude, and altitude. This is analogous to the same way we would need radio sets to listen to radio broadcasts from our favorite FM stations. Tracking devices or receivers are electronic units which are capable of processing weak radio navigation signals emitted by navigation satellites to provide precise location of persons or objects such as vehicles and other valuables to which they are attached. Receivers are named after the satnav signal they process. GPS tracking device or GPS receiver are receivers designed to process GPS signals. Similarly, a GLONASS receiver will process signals from GLONASS, while Bredow receivers are designed to process radio navigation signals from Beidou navigation satellite systems. GPS is the first and most famous satnav system, having rendered positioning service for about two decades prior to the year 2012, when GLONASS attained global coverage. It is therefore common to hear users, many of whom are not aware of the existence of GPS alternatives, refer to every tracking device available in the market as GPS tracking device. Multi-SATNAV or multi-GNSS receivers capable of processing signals from two or more SATNAV systems are gaining popularity in recent time. Why have tracking devices that support multiple SATNAV systems? GPS is a military technology developed and managed by the United States Department of Defense. The deliberate degradation of GPS signals for civilian users between the year 1993 to the year 2000 through the practice of selective availability 
and the claim that the US government denied Indian military access to GPS during Kargi War of 1999 have raised users' concern that the US government can deny any country or region access to GPS service whenever they choose to. Multi sat nav receivers capable of processing signals from multiple sat nav systems is bought for precautionary reason to protect users against GPS access denial while also guarding against the unlikely incidence of GPS service failure. Aside from this precautionary reason, multi sat nav or multi GNSS receivers provide more precise positions since more navigation satellites are visible to them at all times. To satisfy the different needs of various users, SatNav receivers come in different forms. Some come as handheld devices with or without LCD screens and SD card supports for login location data. You will often find this kind of receivers with geographers, geologists, environmental scientists, among others. These kind of receivers are called data loggers. The very kind of receivers we employ in vehicle and asset tracking come as dedicated tracking units able to push updates to users via SMS or to a backend server or data center via data network at preset intervals. This kind of receivers come with inbuilt communication module, which could be GSM module, satellite communication module, Wi Fi or Bluetooth module. We call this type of receivers data pushers. Also, we have the data pullers, which are mostly electronic units designed to serve other primary functions, but have sat-nav modules for extended functionalities. Smartphones, laptops, and tablets are typical examples of data pullers. With the right software, data pullers can be made to function as data pushers. A typical example is the Uber Drivers app that makes driver smartphones to function like a vehicle tracking device or data pusher. Communication infrastructure provides various channels through which tracking devices can send updates on vehicle or asset locations. To the tracking server or data centers. The tracking device is also queried through these communication channels. Depending on the capabilities of the tracking device, data can be transmitted to the server in one of several ways. Cellular network, satellite communication network, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks, are typical channels through which tracking devices can push updates to a backend server. Cellular network is so far the most common method of transmitting data to the tracking server. The GPS tracking device contains a GSM module, which typically uses a SIM card provided by a wireless data provider like MTN, Glow, Airtel, 9Mobile, among others. The module uses this wireless data plan to establish a connection to the internet and then a socket connection with the server. Once connected to the server, it typically sends its location information, then disconnects. Data can be transmitted using TCP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol, or UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. In some cases, Data may be sent to the server using SMS via an SMS gateway. The GPS tracking device may be equipped with a satellite communication module, which connects to one of the major satellite communication data providers like Iridium, Opcom, Globalstar, among others. In which case, Data from the tracking device is sent to an orbiting communication satellite, which then relays the data to a ground station, which in turn forwards the data to a server 
over a standard socket connection. Satellite data communication have slower data transfer rates. They are much more expensive and have much greater data limitations than using a cellular network. Cellular networks cover around only 20% of the Earth. Satellite communication network allows us to reach the other 80%, making it realizable for asset tracking solutions to achieve virtually 100% global coverage. Certain tracking devices like the AT5 and AU7 models multi-GNSS tracking devices that work with both GPS and GLONASS, offered by ATRAC Technology Incorporated by One. Employ a hybrid connectivity to combine the benefits of satellite coverage with lower cost of cellular network communication. ATRAC AT5 and AU7 models tracking devices use Iridium SBD module to ensure an always-on data connection and zero downtime. These devices are equipped with intelligent control units with which they automatically switch between cellular and satellite networks to minimize data transmission costs while making sure the trackers are online at all times. By default, these tracking devices will use the cellular network for two-way communication with the tracking server. When cellular network is unavailable, the tracking device will automatically switch to data transmission via Iridium network. The GPS tracking device may contain an IEEE 802.11 compliant Wi-Fi module, which connects to a wireless router to send data to the server. This type of application is typically limited to localized environments such as tracking vehicles traveling within a closed yard, like a manufacturing plant or factory, a closed estate, a mining plant, among others. The advantage with this solution is that there is no associated cost with the tracking of vehicles, aside from the initial investment. However, the coverage area is limited to a very specific geographical area with Wi-Fi network. The GPS tracking device may contain a Bluetooth module, which it uses to connect to a local Bluetooth enabled server or router to send data to the server. This type of solution tends to be used only in very customized applications. Tracking servers include the physical server machine or virtual machine VM, available as a cloud service and the backend tracking software. The physical server machine or virtual machine hosts the backend tracking software and the database. The backend tracking software receives data from the tracking device embedded in the vehicles and other valuable assets at the front end. It securely stores the received data in the database and serves this information on demand to the client or the user. Tracking devices provide location of vehicles and assets being tracked in the form of position coordinates. Position coordinates are a unique sets of numbers which describe a location point as longitude, latitude, and altitude. The problem with this is that we humans cannot make sense of location coordinates given as longitude, latitude, and altitude on our own without making reference to a map. For instance, if I told you my location is longitude 6.613774, latitude 3.358014, I can bet you wouldn't decode this as a location around the Keja City Mall, Lagos, Nigeria, on ADED. We need geocoding systems to make sense of the position coordinates provided by the tracking devices. The process of converting location coordinates into human readable addresses is what we call reverse geocoding. This is where Google Maps, Microsoft Bing Maps, OpenStreetMaps, and other mapping systems come to our rescue. Tracking software 
and mobile tracking apps are designed to make API calls to Google Maps or other third-party mapping systems in the background. Displaying mapped interface where position coordinates provided by the tracking unit are pinned to corresponding positions on the map. The client refers to the various devices and software through which users interact with the tracking device and access data stored on the database hosted on the tracking server. Browsers such as Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, and mobile tracking apps like CityWatch mobile tracking app, Tracker Manager, and XGPS Monitor by Navixi all constitute the client. The client performs three major functions. These functions include data retriever, data processing, and data presentation functions. The client is responsible for data retriever from the database hosted on the tracking server. Usually, the client retrieves data stored on the database by placing a HTTP request call to the tracking server. Also, the client performs data processing functions, such as connecting to third-party geocoding applications like Google Maps through API to turn coordinates to actual addresses. The client is also saddled with the responsibility of presenting the retrieved data in ways that are meaningful to the user.